Thank you. It's a great pleasure to speak to you today on behalf of the Jack McGovern Coates Disease Foundation Scientific Advisory Board. Before I present on the diagnosis and management of Coates disease currently, as well as the challenges, I wanted to define a few terms. So here is a cross section of the eye showing the cornea in the front, as well as the retina, which lines the back of the eye. I'll be showing some photographs of the eye, similar to this retinal diagram on the lower right. And you'll see that the optic nerve is actually just off center in the posterior part of the eye. And the peripheral retina, which is uh, shown below, is actually quite uh, anterior in the cross section. The macula is a small area of the retina that provides the 2020 or very fine visual acuity. We can take a cross section of the macula using optical coherence tomography, and it shows the well-defined structure that is associated with normal visual acuity. So here's a, now a photograph of an eye, the right eye, showing the normal optic nerve and retinal vessels and the macula with the nice reflexes centrally. Here is a picture of a left eye with Coates disease. And what you'll notice are these yellow spots or exudates. If we look into the peripheral retina, we will see the cause of these exudates. And that's these red yellowish lesions from abnormal vascular um, structures or telangiectasia. And these vascular lesions leak fluid into the retina and cause a retinal detachment, as well as these yellow exudates, which represent lipids or fats and proteins from the uh, systemic circulation. Even when we can successfully treat Coates disease, if there are exudates in the macula, they're often left with a scar shown here. And in cross-section as a disruption in the normal layers of the retina. So what about Coates disease? It's often in children and it's 80% of the time manifests in boys, but that means it also does occur in girls. It does cause unilateral vision loss, but it often presents late, so that is not the initial symptom, rather, Children will come in with crossed eyes or strabismus from the eye being uh, not working well, sometimes called a lazy eye, or because it's noted that there's a yellow appearance or reflex in the pupil when someone takes a photograph, for example. So it's often a misdiagnosis until late when macular exudates appear, and this can be too late for full vision recovery, even with successful treatment. Now I'm going to show you a case of early Coates disease in which the treatment was done before the macular exudates caused a problem. And this was a 10 year old boy who failed a school examination because of 2070 vision in the left eye. After successful treatment of Coates disease, his vision didn't improve initially until he had glasses and correction of the poor vision loss with patching. So this was a situation in which Coates disease was discovered early just by happenstance because of a refractive error or a change in glasses that caused a reduced vision. What's our current management of Coates disease? Detection and classification are critical to determine the management. We use laser treatment often to treat those abnormal vascular areas I showed earlier and sometimes pharmacologic therapy in, in conjunction with a laser. And then in late stages of Coates, we may consider surgery. Vision re rehabilitation is important because there can be other causes for vision loss, such as the case uh, uh, that I showed just previously. And then eye protection, to protect both the eye with Coates as well as the other eye. In advanced forms with retinal detachment, it's important to rule out a tumor, especially uh, the malignant retinoblastoma. And this is why it's essential to have an expert examine individual patients. Coats can have a very variable appearance. 
And therefore, it's important to have someone who treats coats regularly make the diagnosis and the treatment and follow through with visual rehabilitation. So we often use wide angle fluorescing angiography shown here with white representing fluorescein dye that outlines the blood vessels and then areas of telangiectasia. The dark areas are areas where th that are devoid of, of vasculature. And the abnormal blood vessels as well as the avascular retina are treated with laser. And you can see these laser spots here as dark areas in the peripheral retina. Because of the location of the laser in the peripheral retina, it may not be noted to cause problems with visual acuity as long as the macula has not been affected by exudates. What are some of the take-home messages about Coates disease? Well, it's common to miss early cases because children are very adaptable. And even with loss of vision in one eye, they still function perfectly normally. So it's very hard to detect codes unless it's looked for. There's no way to diagnose early Coats disease with telangiectasia without looking in the peripheral retina. Once macular exudates occur, visual acuity can be threatened. It's also important to realize that it's not a fault to miss early coats of either the family or the patient. There's always a management plan, regardless of what level of visual acuity is there or what stage of coats. And it's also important to remember that the variability and the outcome can vary depending on each individual patient. So it's important to have a physician who treats coast disease confirm the diagnosis, determine a management plan, and follow through with visual rehabilitation and protective eyewear. As you can see, research efforts are very important to be able to improve our way of, of identifying codes early and also have better treatments. What are the challenges? Coats disease is a rare condition. So it's very difficult to do a large clinical trial in which you may have hundreds of patients because it's not that common. It's often missed early because there aren't symptoms present, um, even though, unless you actually look for visual acuity in each eye. There's also no model of Coates disease. So in science, we often use cells or we may even have an animal model to be able to help us understand what the molecular mechanisms are or the pathophysiology so that we can make improvements. And many of the other retinovascular diseases that are more common are not exactly like Coates disease. So we can't assume, for example, that we would treat Coates disease the same way we would treat diabetic retinopathy or age-related macular degeneration. So what are some research goals? And these are not certainly all of them, but early screening before vision loss occurs would be important and raising awareness of Coates disease, as well as determine better methods to detect vascular abnormalities in the peripheral retina before macular exudates occur. Once macular exudates appear, it would be nice to understand ways that we can prevent them from causing a scar tissue and reducing visual acuity in the macula. Better treatments for the vascular lesions would be helpful. So as we don't need to um, treat with laser, which often requires placing a child under anesthesia. And I wanna thank you all for your help in spreading awareness and improving our resources and our treatment of patients with Coates disease. Thank you. <laughs>